The last part of this lecture series involves net precipitation reactions. For this class, we focus on net equations. There are complete precipitation reactions, but we're going to focus only on those materials that change state. Imagine that you have two solutions, one of sodium chloride and one of silver nitrate. Here are the molecular formulas for these ionic compounds. Sodium chloride is soluble in water. The Ksp is much, much greater than 1. If you are not sure of this from personal experience, you could always check the solubility rules, and group 1A metal cations are soluble. So if we took sodium chloride in the solid state and placed it in water, we could write a dissolution reaction where the products are sodium ion, aqueous, and chloride ion, aqueous. Aqueous means they are surrounded by water molecules. The Ksp for silver nitrate is also much greater than 1. If we check here in the solubility rules, nitrate is a many-atomed, low-charge polyatomic ion that with silver 1 plus is soluble. If we had silver nitrate solid and placed it in water, we would get silver ion and nitrate ion in the aqueous state. If we mixed these two solutions, we would have sodium chloride and silver nitrate all floating about in the same solution. So our main point here is to recognize that if compounds are soluble, the ions float apart and act as separate entities in solution. The net equation contains only the species that react or change state. So would sodium ion and chloride ion, once we mix the solution with silver nitrate, form a precipitate? No. Sodium chloride is soluble in water, and it doesn't matter if we add silver nitrate to that water. As long as we do not add a large amount of silver nitrate and vastly change the ionic concentration in the water, sodium chloride solubility will not be affected. What about silver and nitrate? There will be no reaction. If we have a solution of silver nitrate and we add sodium chloride to it, this will not dramatically change the solubility of the silver nitrate solid. It will remain soluble. What about sodium ion and silver ion? Would a reaction occur between them? Well, they need to be attracted to one another. Do positive charges attract one another? They do not. They repel. So we would say no reaction. Although I used to give fill-in-the-blank chemistry exams, and I have seen people write precipitation reactions between two cations. What about the chloride anion and the nitrate anion? Would a reaction occur between them? Well, certainly not a precipitation reaction. Like charges repel. So again, no reaction occurs. Would positions 1 and 4, sodium ion and nitrate ion, form a precipitate? What is the Ksp of sodium nitrate? Well, if we look here at the solubility rules, group 1A metal cations form soluble ionic compounds. So the Ksp is greater than 1. So these would be our spectator ions in solution. They are aqueous before the solutions are mixed and aqueous after the solutions are mixed. They do not change state, so they are not part of our net precipitation reaction. No reaction occurs between them. What about the inner combination, positions 2 and 3? Will silver chloride have a reaction? Let's check our solubility rules. Hmm. I see that most compounds of chloride are soluble, but silver chloride is an exception. This would precipitate. So the Ksp of silver chloride is approximately 10 to the minus 10. This is much, much less than 1. So a reaction will occur between silver cation and chloride anion. We can write that reaction as aqueous silver cation 
plus aqueous chloride anion form silver chloride solid, the neutral ionic compound. Here is what you might envision. We have a solution of sodium chloride. We have a solution of silver nitrate. Notice how the cations and anions are separated from one another in solution. We take these solutions and we pour them into the same beaker. What happens? Precipitation occurs between the silver ion and the chloride ion, so we get a solid layer on the bottom. But nothing happens to the sodium ion and the nitrate ion. They were floating about in solution before we mixed, and they're still floating about in solution afterward. Let's try another one. Write the net precipitation equation, if one exists, for the formation of the solid when the following solutions are mixed, calcium chloride and nickel 2 sulfate. Remember that we are going to separate ions for soluble species. So calcium chloride is soluble, and it will separate into these two ions. This would fall under rule 3, where compounds with chloride are soluble, and calcium 2 plus is not on the exception list. Nickel 2 sulfate. This would dissolve into nickel 2 plus and sulfate 2 minus. This would fall under rule 4. Compounds of sulfate ions are soluble, and nickel 2 is not one of our exceptions. So now it's time to consider what combinations might interact. Does nickel 2 chloride precipitate? Let's check those rules again. I see that most chlorides are soluble, and nickel 2 plus is not on the exception list. So the answer is no. Nickel 2 chloride is soluble. What about calcium sulfate? From the precipitation rules, does calcium sulfate precipitate? Let's see here. Rule 4. Compounds of sulfate ions are soluble, but calcium 2 plus is an exception and will form an insoluble compound with sulfate, which means it precipitates. Our answer is yes. So the KSP of calcium sulfate is a small value of less than 1, and this is our net precipitation reaction, an aqueous cation and an aqueous anion become a neutral solid ionic compound. Here are my suggestions for writing precipitation reactions. First, break up each compound into the cation and the anion component. Then, to make our work easy, we could cross out any ions that never precipitate with anything. So you can take out the ions in rules one and two and one and two only. Don't start taking out ions from rules three or four, just one and two. Then we can match up the combinations that are left, cation to anion, or innies, which are positions two and three, and outies, which are positions one and four. We'll start with two possible combinations, but we may get rid of one of them by our actions in step two. For the combinations that are left, decide from the solubility rules which ions form or precipitate. Write the cation as an aqueous material and anion as an aqueous material on the reactant side. Write the precipitate as a solid material on the product side. And of course, be sure you balance the number of cations and anions in order to have a neutral precipitate using the lowest common multiple. In other words, crisscross. Finally, balance the reaction by putting coefficients in front of the aqueous cation and anion that match the subscripts in the precipitate. Here's an example of following those steps. Suppose we are given a solution of sodium phosphate and a solution of silver nitrate. Here's the formula for sodium phosphate and silver nitrate. First, let's break up each compound into the cation and anion component. This means you're going to have to remember your charges on cations and polyatomic ions. So we'll have sodium 1+, phosphate 3-, silver 1+, and nitrate. 
Next step, cross out any ions that never precipitate with anything. So I will say goodbye to sodium 1 plus and nitrate. Next, we can match up the combinations that are left. The only combination left to consider is phosphate with silver. Now we can decide from the solubility rules which ions form a precipitate. So let's take a look at those rules. Phosphate has a very high charge on it, a 3 minus. So it falls under rule 5, which is the catch-all. Most other ionic compounds are insoluble, meaning a precipitate forms. So we'll write the cation and anion on the reactant side in the aqueous state. Now we'll need to write the precipitate on the product side, and of course we will crisscross the charges to make sure that we have a neutral solid. So we need three silver ions to match one phosphate anion. Finally, we should balance this reaction. Remember that subscripts become coefficients. So we need a three in front of that silver. And just for fun, let's name this. This would be silver phosphate. So this is my general recommended technique. For the next lecture series, we're gonna do some practice on precipitation reactions. So if you need to, watch the end of this video again to make sure you understand the steps.